Podcast with Joe and Dave. Be warned, the discussions in this podcast will contain detailed spoilers. For spoiler free reviews of newly released films, please check out our channel, Reviews Without Remorse, on YouTube and Vidme. Enter at your own risk and enjoy the show. We are Reviews Without Remorse, and we can't do anything. My name is David, and I can't equate myself to any character from the movie. And the man I share a symbiotic relationship with, ladies and gentlemen, Joe. This is episode 86, and in this show, we will discuss a synopsis and picture for the upcoming Jon Favreau Star Wars show has shown up online. It's from Favreau's Instagram, so it's real. Warner Brothers picks up Disney's dropped ball and confirms that James Gunn has been tapped to write the screenplay and potentially direct Suicide Squad 2. New York City Comic Con has dropped a five-minute Aquaman teaser, clip, trailer? Not sure what to call it, but we've watched it, and we're going to hear about it. Speaking of Aquaman, Fox has announced that they are doing a PG-13 cut of Deadpool 2 to be released on the same day as Aquaman. And we're going to discuss why it might be a crazy like a fox idea. (laughs) And then, it's the movie that nobody asked for. The movie we didn't want to review, but here it is anyway, Venom. What's up, my man? (laughs) I feel like a turd in the wind. Oh, no, no, I I purposely did not use that because I was like, oh, God, that's going to be so overused by the time we get to it. (laughs) What's up, partner? <laughs> much, man. Are you, are you recovered yet from this movie enough to talk about it? I let me, let me put it this way. The only thing that's possibly cleansing my palate is knowing what movie we're reviewing next week, which we'll get to. This is true. But then Jabba the Hutt was all, oh, no, this guy's too badass, man. So then 80 Jedi showed up. I took out about 67 of them, but then 20 dudes finally flanked me. And I was like, you know what, kids? It's been real, Daddy-O, but I'm not giving you the pleasure. So I jumped into the pit myself. On the way down, I was thinking maybe I should have left him a party favor. Oh, I did. A thermal detonator right up their ass. Ba-boom! Oh, that's awesome. Man, at least he didn't go out like a punk. Yeah. Oh, because I looked like a badass. Are you crying? Oh. Huh? <laughs> That's funny. I'm okay. Okay, so on John Favreau's official Instagram, he put up what some would describe, I guess, as a characterization of the main character for the TV show he's going to be working on that's related to Star Wars. And it appears from what he has put up there that it is following a a Mandalorian, which is, for those who are not quite the nerds that Joe and I are when it comes to Star Wars, back when it was good, Mandalorians is the um, uh, race, the the, uh, creatures, the planet, whatever you want to call it, that is where the character of both Boba Fett and Jango Fett uh, originated from. The, it seems that the idea is, is that this is going to be kind of like, it, it almost sounds like, like a have gun, uh, have gun will travel in a Star Wars universe starring a Mandalorian who is the gun uh, for hire. Uh, and it takes place in between Return of the Jedi and The Force Awakens. And they showed off a picture of the, the costume and everything like that. And well, Joe, what's your feelings? Uh, I, I, first of all, I didn't realize it happened after Jedi. So that's kind of cool. Cause I honestly, I'm kind of so used to everything taking place between revenge of the Sith and a new hope that this is kind of refreshing to kind of get, get out a little bit and, and, uh, explore that end of the, the universe. And, uh, Hey, maybe they'll even explain what actually happened between Jedi and, uh, the force awakens. Um, but anyway, the, the picture looked pretty cool I you know I mean I was kind of I looked at it real quick I didn't get a great sense of it but um if John Favreau's running this I got a pretty good feeling I honestly I do too it sounds like an interesting concept 
uh, still in a Star Wars Star Warsy vein, and Favreau gets a lot of cred for me for a, I I can't think of a Favreau movie of his that I didn't like, at least in some form. Even Iron Man mm. two, you could argue is his weakest uh, movie that he's ever done, is still an entertaining movie. Agreed, and I I feel like I have always sort of felt like that movie was tasked with a lot of things, and you can tell that it was kind of butchered up in the editing room. Uh, mm -hmm. So yeah, I'm sort of always willing to give that one a little pass, especially where he's concerned. But uh, he's money, baby. He's money. He doesn't even know it. Don't talk that way. You're right. so you're so money, and you don't even know it. That's what I keep trying to tell you. You're so money. Could you, you not mess with it. me right now? Uh, yeah, no. It uh, there's no talk of when it's supposed to premiere. There's no talk of if it's going to be on a service or if this is just um, if it's going to be on network TV. My money says it's probably going to be on the new Disney streaming service, but nobody's saying one way or the other just yet. Okay. And again, I got, I, I like the way he kind of put it out there. I, I the yellow type uh, against the black background, it was mm -hmm. star Wars ask without, you know, getting silly and it wasn't the crawl or anything, but uh, I, I pretty cool, you know, just a little, just a little taste to get you to wet your whistle a little bit. Is this the real life? Let me out of here, Donald, please. I want to assemble a task force of the most dangerous people on the planet. They're bad guys. Worst of the worst. Now this is interesting and not at all unexpected. Um, it appears that Warner Brothers has officially this is this isn't a rumor. Warner Brothers has actually confirmed it that they have tapped James Gunn to write the screenplay for Suicide Squad 2, and potentially he may be directing it as well. Well, there you go, Disney. <laughs> That's, I, you know what? That is poetic justice, actually. Uh, you, you decided that he was not good enough for, for Disney and for Marvel. DC was more than happy to... Uh, it's kind of like the girl you took advantage of, you know, and you didn't appreciate her at the time. <laughs> well, there's always another guy who's gonna. <laughs> um, it's really not all that surprising. What surprises me the most about this entire situation is now I'm interested in seeing Suicide Squads too. Right? Yeah, that's uh, <laughs> that, that that is an interesting conundrum, isn't it? Uh, I I am a little. Uh, I mean, seriously, it, it's kind of bittersweet. I mean, that first Suicide Squad was just so dreadful. I mean, it was just dreadful on multiple... I'm pretty sure that ended up being my worst, absolute worst of the year that year. Uh, it was. Yeah, it was so bad that, first of all, it's got nowhere to go but up. And, Indeed. you know, if James Gunn is really attached... Now, it's interesting, though, because, again, it's not like... It's not like DC and Warner Brothers have not had creative capable people uh working on their projects i just think that warner brothers is what's completely screwing it up uh so again james gunn being in there is not a guarantee of a great film it's it's guaranteed potential but it's not guaranteed that the final product will be will be anything special so yeah, it's gonna be interesting to see how they go forward. I mean, this this could really be a, a transformative moment for that company. I mean, again, like I said, nowhere to go but up. So I'm curious. I am also very curious. I think if anybody can uh, pull it off, it would be it would be James Gunn. I I'm honestly happy that he's still working. I was really worried that this was going to be beginning of a black uh, like a black ball for him. But thankfully, you know, he's gotten picked up. Oh, I didn't think so. I, I, I was, I, I, I was always feeling very confident this that somebody you was going to really grab him up. Do know. But yeah. I guess the outpouring definitely made a difference, I'm sure. Um, I will say this much. My first prediction. Here's my first prediction for casting. Ladies and gentlemen, Dave Bautista as Bane. There it is. Ah, uh, okay. <laughs> That's interesting. That is very interesting. Okay. I Yeah, on multiple levels, isn't it? Uh, yep. that would be pretty interesting. I, I would, yeah, yeah. Okay. I mean, I could say it for sure. So we'll see. He definitely has the build. He could pull, he, he might be able to pull it off. But yeah, after all the defense that he did, you know that he's got a part in this. You know it. I, I, yeah, I, I wouldn't be surprised. Well, again, it, it really depends on whether he kind of full blown just ditches Disney 
Um, but uh, yeah, if he goes through with that, I I'm totally with you there. My parents were from different worlds. And I was a product of a love that never should have been. He could unite our worlds one day. A son of the land and a son of the seas. Okay, so this past weekend was New York Comic Con. Uh, the sort of, um, uh, what's the best way to say this? Kind of like the cousin to San Diego Comic Con. Mm. You have the San Diego Comic Con, that's where all the big stuff gets announced. But, you know, New York City Comic Con gets its own pretty decent stuff. They actually released a trailer of the new Daredevil, the, th- the season three of Daredevil, which all I have to say is this Wilson Fisk in a white suit. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> but, uh, but. Yeah, go ahead. I'm sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. You, you go Nothing. First. Just, I, I, saw it, I saw the Daredevil trailer. I know we're not going to spend a lot of time on it, but I, I did think it looked pretty cool. I like where that series is, is. I like how it's been, and I like where it's going. I agreed. 100% agreed. It's, it's a great series, and we should actually go over that at some point. Yeah. Now. That aside, the other thing that happened at the Comic-Con this weekend is they released a five minutes, I guess, like clips from the up and coming Aquaman movie to try to draw up some hype. And I kind of liked it. <laughs> I, 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 I can't explain. I mean, yeah, there was some crassness in it, but I don't know what it was. But by the end of it, I was like, huh, you know what? I'm kind of a little more excited to see it now than I was before. Mm. Yeah, I, I'm with you there. I, I think that, I mean, they're they're definitely learning the lesson in terms of, you know, bl- you know, correcting that bland color scheme. Mm-hmm. This one is sh- is sure vibrant. It is sure. I mean, the colors are are vivid. It's a good looking film uh, in that respect. And again, it's not like the uh, the Justice League where they kind of last minute just kind of ran in and tried to color correct as best they could and it didn't work. Uh, no, this looks like they went into this with the idea that we're going to do a, a, a vibrant looking film. Uh, the CGI is quirky. Um, and I'm, it's not even so much that undersea stuff because that is getting pretty easy at this point. But trying to do the on land kind of stuff, like when they're, they're tracking her... It, you know, it almost looks like a drone shot following her as she's sort of running from rooftop to rooftop, and it is a little clunky, a little clunky. Uh, but yeah, I mean, the the spirit of the film looks like it could be fun. It, it definitely looks like they're just kind of going, uh, you know, very Guardians of the Galaxy, the you know, wild creatures, and uh, so yeah, I I I'm not as uh, I'm not dreading it the way I was. Mm. I, I feel like this could be. If nothing else, it, it'll be an entertaining popcorn candy kind of a two hours. Hey, you know what? DC could use that at this point. It's you know, it's always been so gloomy up until now because yeah. of the curse of Batman, whatever the case may be. Exactly. And I, I found myself enjoying it a lot more than I thought I was going to. I still can't get over Amber Heard's redhead. I can't. <laughs> yeah. It's 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 still like, could you tone it down just a little bit? It really looks unreal. Yeah. I agree. She, I mean, she, but, she looks um, like fr- she looks like Frenchie in Greece. I, but pardon me. <laughs> she looks like Frenchie from Greece. <laughs> <laughs> I think her hair was actually pink, but yeah. Uh, the I thought that the chase scene was pretty neat. I I liked it. I really liked seeing Black Manta in action. And I'm sorry. Every time he crosses his arms in front of his head and kind of leans forwards to fire out the shot, I'm sorry. I'm geeking out every time. Every uh-huh. time I see it. Yeah. Uh, I'm with you. Like I said, I, I I really think it's 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 definitely an improvement on what we got before. Uh, you know, again, a little hesitant, but but again, I'm not as not as worried. And I mean, honestly, if you asked me two weeks ago, I, I would have been like, oh, I I would have been a, a shade above how I felt going into Venom, frankly, just about seeing Aquaman. But uh, th- this this did make it look a little more fun, and I'm I'm a little more willing. Guess what? What? Your grandfather's here. Can't you tell me I'm sick? You're sick. That's why he's here. He'll pinch my cheek. I hate that. Maybe he won't. Hey, how is this sick? Huh? I think 
I'll leave you two pals alone. I brought you a special present. What is it? Open it up. A book? That's right. When I was your age, television was called books. And this is a special book. It was the book my father used to read to me when I was sick, and I used to read it to your father. And today, I'm going to read it to you. Okay. So, they said they would never, ever do a PG-13 version of Deadpool. And yet, <laughs> they have announced that they're doing a PG-13 version of Deadpool, and they're releasing it the same day as as uh, Aquaman. Now, it's it's. I think it's Deadpool 2, actually. I, I'm not 100% clear on that. Some people say it's Deadpool 2. Some people say it's Deadpool 1. Not 100% clear about it. But... It's cut down in a PG-13 manner. Mm. Now, I was about ready to raise the pitchforks on this one and be like, what the hell? Why are you doing this? This character is not made. And then the twist came in. It is being done. It is being framed with Deadpool in a Santa Claus cap reading the story of Deadpool to an adult Fred Savage sitting in bed in a set that looks exactly like out of Princess Bride. And all of a sudden, I'm on board. Uh, yeah. I mean, that, that, I, that picture I saw definitely did look pretty funny. Uh, listen, I, you know what? I'm going to be the other guy today and say I'm kind of on board with it. I, in fact, I'm kind of very much on board with it. Um, because I, 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 it's almost like if a studio went to the creators and said, no, 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 no R, you're going to have to make this PG-13. That's when my torches and pitchforks would come out. The idea that they are free to do what they please and do an R-rated film and then have an opportunity to make another version toned down that, that parents can show their youngins, I don't mind that, honestly. In fact, it's funny. I actually did years ago. You ever see the movie Sideways? Oh, God, yeah. Yeah, I, I, did, I did sort of a, an edit of that myself because I wanted to be able to show my girlfriend's then 12-year-old daughter. Because um, <laughs> I thought, I thought all, other than all the, the dirty stuff, I thought, the, you know, the, it's actually a great movie and, and it sort of gives you a little, you know, makes you kind of, it, it explains the passion people have for wine. And, you know, I thought it was pretty good. So, yeah, so you, I kind of so made my own little... The, you, you removed the scene with the swinging penis, didn't you? I, yeah, I removed anything that was dingly dangly and, and a couple of cuss <laughs> words here and there. And uh, um, so, you know, so I, I kind of get it. I, I get it. In fact, even years ago, I remember when, and this was before PG-13, they actually did a PG version of Saturday Night Fever that they actually put in theaters. I remember uh, that, actually. Yeah. Right. And again, it's because a lot of people, you know, went into that thinking like, you know, they, they saw the, the visuals of, of the disco dancing and, and the, the suit, the outfits, and everybody wanted to go. Then you go and it's like, oh, yeah, it's 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 kind of really nasty. And there's actual gang rape and, and <laughs> it's like and, and suicide. Oh, OK. So so, you know, so, yeah, I, I thought the the decision to do a toned down version that more people could see what they wanted to see from that was kind of made sense. Uh, and again, it doesn't take away from the original vision of what it was. So yeah, I like this. I, I like the idea that, you know, again, mainstream young audiences can now see this film and, and that a parent may, you know, be a little more willing to let them see it now. Uh, and, and again, like you said, doing it the way they're doing it adds just a sort of a second level of creativity to it. In fact, I actually hope they do both films because doing it this way, I... I'd, if they're doing this, if they're going to do one, they could probably do both pretty easily. Because, again, you're just doing more scenes with him and you're just a little more time in the editing room. You could bang out both films. So, yeah, listen, I, I think this is a great idea, actually. All right. I, I'm kind of I, I'm kind of on board with it as well. As long as they're doing it in a Deadpool-esque way, I can get on board with it. Oh, and by the way, my parents actually took me to see the R-rated Saturday Night Fever. I had no <laughs> idea what was going on half the time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I think even when I was younger, there was a lot of that that went, went over my head. Yeah, but uh, you know, it's got a lot, much darker movie than you, than you expected going in. But uh, so yeah, I, like I said, I, I I get it. And before we get to our review, I just want to throw out there that Friday, October the fifth, 
was Global James Bond Day. Our own head of section, Mr. Joe here, has a, uh, well, we're going to call it the main podcast. We're kind of the splinter podcast uh, called (laughs) Being James Bond. Check out Being James Bond to find out all the things. I'll put it to you this way. Our, Our friend Joe... He met up with one of the Bonds. I'm not going to say which one, but he's in his favorite movie. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, Yeah, so check out the podcast, or you can check out, I I am posting a video on YouTube, uh, just kind of me rattling off the whole experience and also kind of talking about my wish list for Bond 25. Uh, So yeah, rather rather than getting into it here, go check it out. I'm Eddie Brock. I'm a reporter. I always seem to find myself questioning something the government may not be looking at. I found something really bad. And I have been Eddie. Who's that bad? 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 Taken. When Eddie Brock acquires the power of a symbiote, he will have to release his alter ego Venom to save his life. Written by Jeff Pinker, Scott Rosenberg, and Kelly Marcel. Story by Jeff Pinker and Scott Rosenberg. Based on characters created by Todd McFarlane and David McLean. Directed by Ruben Fleischer. Venom. So, what is it lately with movies that kind of feel like somebody dipped their hand into it and ripped the soul out of it? (laughs) <laughs> yeah um how about this i'm sitting there watching this film okay i'm watching this story start to unfold and i see a spaceship crash lands on earth we have an alien uh the alien and i see that there's a hero on screen and a villain on screen uh and the you know the villain hangs out in the, the lab and well, the, the 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 alien, it turns out, is actually here to here to save us. And there's a meaner, bigger <laughs> alien that's gonna gonna take over the whole world or whatever. And the the where have I seen this before? How did? Why does this sound so familiar? We saw it three weeks ago. Oh right. <laughs> So, okay, what is it with this particular script now that now everybody seems to want to do this particular story? I don't know, but it's just, I as I'm watching it, I was saying to myself, not only is it so much like The Predator, but like The Predator, it kind of feels like somebody edited a lot of what they were going for. Um, here, let me, here, let me give you a quick example. I, I took my son to see it with me. Now, he is... A, he, he makes me look like an amateur when it comes to comic book knowledge. So, as we're watching the movie, he's, you know, he's actually interested. He's into it. And as we and when the movie was over, he was explaining how, oh, the char- that character was Riot. There were, there were like three other symbiotes that came down. And so on. he went through the whole thing. And I was like, really? This, this was actually from the comic books? Even I didn't realize this. Mm. And he made, this was his observation. He said... It's like they wanted to make a movie that respected the character, but somebody wouldn't let them. Now, there's an interesting observation. Out of the minds, out of the mouths of babes, huh? <laughs> you know, um, you know what? I I wouldn't disagree with that. I I would say that there were moments where I was getting a feeling like somebody. Somebody did sort of want to do something with this. Um, but then I kept getting this other feeling like... This... Somebody who actually felt passionate about it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that whatever they were going for didn't quite happen. And I, I kind of found that the only redeeming quality of the, of the film was that even, somebody there also kind of realized that this was nonsense. And it was almost like once they acknowledged that and started playing along, I, 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 I'll save it to the end or t- to later. But I, I mean, there was one time I genuinely laughed out loud and I could not for the life of me figure out if if, if I'm laughing with the movie or at it. Uh, I, I think couldn't I'm tell anymore. Bit of both. Um, I think there were moments where you did like I, I laughed out loud at the scene where they're at the office building and and Venom says in his head, jump. 
And Eddie just kind of looks out the window. And next thing you know, he's at the elevator. And then you hear, you know, Venom say, pussy. Yeah. <laughs> I laughed at that. I, I, but, but, but there were other moments like that. That whole fight in his house where he's yeah. like, I'm sorry. I'm like, I, I was laughing, but not at, you know, the comedy of it. I just thought it was ridiculous. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, I, I felt like the whole movie was like that. Um, I, I mean... I mean, it's it seemed so weird and so inept. Like, I mean, you talk about the editing. Honestly, there's moments where I'm not even sure anymore if what I'm seeing was was intentional. Was this part of the plan or what? Because I like just to kind of get back and sort of start at the beginning. You know, it starts off with Eddie Brock and his girlfriend, right? Mm. And of course, like there's so much like "Good morning, honey bunny," yada yada yada, and, and it's date night tonight. And they go on the date night, and they're they're head over heels in love. And even sitting at the computer, it's the pictures of the two of them, you know, smooching or whatever. And I'm like, okay, I get it. Something is going to go wrong. I, and I thought for sure that this, I it, except for the fact that I had already seen a lot of her in the trailer, I thought for sure that this girl was going to be dead in five minutes. <laughs> I, if I did again, if I didn't see the trailers, I would have I would have been sitting there going like, "Well, she ain't gonna be around long. <laughs> Everything's going a little too." I get it, I get it, you know. So you know, so of course, like like not five ten minutes into this film, something happens. They break up. It's it's over. It's all over. It's in 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 you know in a heartbeat. Um, once that happened, I swear it felt like a totally different movie all of a sudden. Like this guy who seemed like he's he's a reporter. He's I mean I could never understand that I still don't understand why Tom Hardy was playing it. Like he he's ta- he's talking like a, a a teenager, like like an uneducated teenager. Like he's he sounds like he should be on the Bad News Bears. Um, <laughs> So I, I didn't understand what that was about, but it, but they kind of toned it down in the beginning of the film because now he's I'm a reporter and I got sent out on a job and yada yada. I'm a hard hitting reporter, and then then suddenly he he's out of a, out of a job. Now he's like broke, destitute in this miserable apartment. His plants are dying. He's got the flowers that are like like the leaves are falling off as you, as you're looking at it. Everything is just awful, awful, awful. And you're saying like, well, if this guy was a reasonably intelligent person. What happened? Like why? Why? And now he's got like. And now of course now he's got the neighbor across the hall who who now a guy a guy who was was tough enough to to take on one of the wealthiest most vicious CEOs ever. Now he's too chicken shit to knock on a door and say, uh, could you please not? Uh, could you please not? Uh, yeah. I, like what was that? I could. I'm like what what is what is happening with this movie? So already I'm just like I'm like I don't know what the hell's going on with this. I mean it was I mean some of it was very obvious. Like the guy across the hall, you're saying to yourself like, all right, he's gonna be dead in 20 minutes. When, when the guy <laughs> holds up the lady in the store, I mean again you saw that in the trailer. Another dumb Sony move, by the way. Uh, Sony's got this weird habit of putting their final shots of the film in their trailers. Guys, well then you know it's coming. I mean like save something. <laughs> but anyways, I mean so you saw you knew that guy was gonna be dead by the end. Um, the whole thing was this weird mishmash right out of the gate. Like it, t- it took no time at all for this thing to just go totally off the rails, and you just now you just feel like you're watching just a, a, a bad B movie, and it's like, okay, am I gonna be laughing at it at least? I couldn't laugh at it. I cringed a lot, honestly. Um, my first thing out of the gate was the realization that within the first fifteen minutes. I didn't like Eddie Brock. I did not like yeah. him as a character. Exactly. I, and and granted, now, comically speaking, it's actually very similar to the origin of Eddie Brock's character from the comic, which is fine. I kind of appreciate that they want to try to keep it comic, uh, comic accurate, but in a weird way, you've just cut yourself off at the knees. He, he looked at his girlfriend's email at a private and confidential legal document, which should have gotten her basically disbarred. So she's basically out of a career now, mm-hmm. or she should be because of that. Right. The, uh, right. And I mean, and, well, I mean, she got fired. Yeah, she got fired, but in the real world, she would have gotten disbarred. Right. 
She she absolutely positively would have gotten disbarred. That's a complete breach. And 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 even if she didn't get disbarred, who the hell would hire her? Oh, why why did you why were you fired from the last job? Because my boyfriend uh, looked through my emails and blah 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 blah. Nobody's ever gonna trust her if that's yeah. the case. He basically ruined her life. So immediately, I have no sympathy for the guy. And yeah, yeah and uh, and it's and it, it was weird. And again, we knew this kind of going in. It's it was uh, th- this. This version, they're, again, they're trying to make him an anti-hero when in the comics he's a full-blown villain. Yeah. So, so right. I mean, if you're going to tweak the story and try to make this guy sympathetic, well, then you can't just go ahead and do that. I mean, I there was a part of me that was willing to kind of go along with it because this was the redemption. Like, this was his, I mean, I mean a, a poor story arc, a, a poor character arc. But I, I could see what they were going for, where he screwed up in the beginning, and then he later on he has to apologize. He has to he has to own up to the fact that he did it and apologize, which again happens in a really really weird way. But <laughs> again, we'll get to that. So anyway, I, yeah, I I was kind of getting it, but yeah, it like you said, it was it was poor, it was awkward, and and like you said, it made him an unlikable person even at the end. But when did? I don't get where he actually apologized for it. He every time somebody asked him, he made it sound like that um, that the bad guy took it all away from him. It's like okay, yeah, yeah, he did, but you gave him the gun. Yeah, but he, he apologized at the he, he apologized because Venom told him Venom had a sit down and said, Eddie, you should really apologize to her. You know, you haven't said you're sorry for what you did. Yeah, like, that like, was wonderful. <laughs> all right, that that was. I mean, seriously. That was where I was. I mean, you want I I I'm, that's what I'm saying to myself. Does this movie know that I'm laughing at it? I can't tell anymore. When he is sitting there giving love love life advice to Eddie, I'm like, is, is this supposed to be hysterical? Because it's hysterical. It is so ridiculous. This is Venom. Venom, <laughs> the symbiote creature from. First of all, even when he starts talking in the beginning, it's weird and awkward because you're going. And again, this is the problem with how they're they're gonna treat this this character. When he starts talking to Eddie, you're you're kind of going immediately. I'm saying to myself, why would this thing know English? Why would it be talking? Why would it be communicating? Why would it be speaking verbally to Eddie? Uh, it, it just seemed weird right out of the gate. Even and even when he's in the apartment. And he says, don't answer the door. And the door knocks. He says it before there's a knock on the door. And I'm going, yeah. so he's psychic too? Like, does no, no, this no. Spidey sense. Spidey sense. Why, but why does Venom have <laughs> Spidey sense? I, I'm, I'm is, joking. Right. <laughs> um, so already I'm kind of going like, this is bizarre. And then the conversations continue to, to go forward. When the thing would, would reach out and sort of make the face so that Eddie can talk to... First of all, when he sees the reflection in the car window... I, I'm already going like, why would that be? That doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Um, but then when the thing like would make the face and start talking to him, I'm like, that's that's weird. That doesn't make any sense at all. Like I said, they're they're the, the way they've changed the origin of this creature character around. Uh, I mean, seriously, we're talking about a, the origin of this character is that he was Spider Man. He was he was a symbiote that attached himself to Spider Man, became the, the the costume that Spider Man wore before he actually even realized that this thing was actually alive and, and, and an actual creature. But because it had attached itself to the Spider Man costume, it adapted the look of the costume. Right. So he but here you just have a a, a black gloopy thing with these white eyes and teeth and we're supposed to just look at that and say, that's just how this alien looks. The fact that it actually looks a little like Spider-Man is a complete coincidence. Uh, <laughs> okay. So now, so now when he's talking to it, it just looks weird. Like, why would this thing have this? Like, why would, uh, why would a glob of goo take the form of eyes and a mouth? Unless, it's adhering to a person. Like I, I mean, I, 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 it's almost, it's almost so convoluted. I can't even really even explain my point. But you get where I'm saying. Like, like it doesn't, it didn't oh, make yeah. any sense. Why? So of course, as these things are happening, it just seems so weird. Like, like I mean, again, if this had nothing to do with Spider-Man or a Marvel comic, I wonder what people would actually be saying. Like, what is this movie? I, 
I'm hard pressed to find anybody who's seen the movie that's actually enjoyed it. I think I have a coworker tonight who's dying to talk with me about it, and I'll probably get more information out of him then. Mm. But I didn't get I didn't get any enjoyment out of this movie. I didn't get any of the things that they were trying to do to distance itself and yet center itself in a Spider-Man style universe. Uh, all the changes that they made in order to make it standalone outside of Spider-Man took away a lot of the emotional impact as far as I was concerned. Yeah. You had you had you had this wonderful revenge story of a character who you know, two lost souls who blame their problems on one person who get together and eventually, you know, down the line they finally, you know, get past that and move on, you know, to other things. But in the end, Eddie Brock was still a bastard in the comic books. I don't this this sudden you know, anti-heroing of Eddie Brock is really, really bothering me because even even after him and the symbiote um, broke up, he was still a slime ball. He was still a complete slime ball and unapologetic about it as well. Mm. So when you, you, you take that into consideration as the character, it's like, okay, I see why they have to make some changes. <clears throat> but the problem is, is that they really didn't do anything uh, – redemptive with the character that made them compelling at any point even when venom tells him to apologize which was like you said completely out there <laughs> completely yeah. out of character but even when he did that i wasn't feeling any sincerity i didn't feel any sympathy for him you know as far as i was concerned the girl was absolutely right to kick him to the curb and shouldn't have even looked back when he knocked on the damn door or, or, or stalking in front of her place she should yeah. have called the damn cops yeah i, I agree well it was you know, another funny thing about that part, I I didn't. I, was there a thing that said six months later or something? Yes, yes, there was. Yeah, because I, I honestly, I don't. For some reason, I kind of just sort of missed it. So by the time he goes to the house and she gets out of the car and there's a guy in the car, I was I was sitting there going, "Jeez, you slut!" I I thought it was like a week ago. <laughs> Like, like no, no, it was, it was, it was, it was like six months later or something like that. That was, yeah. that was absolutely there. It was still pretty quick for her to suddenly have a guy living with her, you know, with with his own set of keys. Yeah, with with his own set yeah. of keys. After, I, mean, you know, I mean, you know, I'm not, I mean, I'm not here to pick on somebody's uh, whatever, but I mean, honestly, I like when I was watching it for some reason, I thought it, it seemed like not a day had had gone by. Um, well, they, they didn't really. The, the at most they gave him a little more facial hair growth. That was how they. Determined yeah. the the passage of time and and the the Chiron on the screen that basically said the passage of time, but but in a, in a weird way it kind of diminished again the characterization for um, Michelle Williams' character because they were so in love they made sure to set up the fact that they were so in love right all right yeah yeah and exactly he, right and he he betray he betrays her trust and she flips out and she breaks up with him all righteously as far as I'm concerned mm -hmm. but she gets herself back together quick enough and then gets into a serious enough relationship that the person's moved in within six months you know i don't care how freaking psychologically strong you are you don't jump back in the wagon that quickly that's called a rebound <laughs> well i yeah i mean it's hard to say i mean but you know like like i said i, I didn't really I, I didn't really mean to disparage in that that, that much because I, I like i said it just it visually the way it was communicated i thought it was awkward you're like all of us all of, and again all of a sudden this guy's in a rundown beat up apartment uh, I, I don't know the whole the whole, it, the whole thing just really fit right he he's he's got he's he's living in a slum basically and for some reason she's still living in the nice she she apartment that she had even though apparently she's out of work uh i don't know maybe the, maybe the doctor's paying the bills who, who knows but um but well, I, they didn't I, really, I, well they never really say whether she's working or not from that point forward right. one assumes if she still has they're they're living in san francisco if she's still living in a house in san francisco she's still making bucks there's yeah. no way right <laughs> um but again i i still can't like i the, i thought the whole eddie brock character was played so weird i i did not understand why why he was talking like he did like when they when they finally get like even by the end of the film and it was weird too because again when it, when you see that in the trailer that the i'm gonna cut off your arms and legs and you'll be rolling down the street like you figure that'd be in the middle of the movie Le right. leave it to leave it to sony to take their their ending shot and put it in the trailer to completely ruin it um but I, but even as he's talking, oh, sorry, Mrs. J, I, I got, I got like a, a, a sim, I, what do you call it? I got a virus parasite. or something. Or I got a parasite. And again, talking like, like, like a, like a dysfunctional teenager. 
I, I could not understand that. I'm like, why would you play this character like that? It doesn't make any sense. This guy's like, supposed to be a journalist, for God's sake. He's supposed to have a brain. So why, supposed why, to be a relatively respected journalist from the way they made it sound. Right. I, a, a guy, seriously, a guy who gets sent to interview one of the most powerful men in the world, has to, you, you have to have your... I, I mean, again, stupid for them to send him knowing that he's probably going to do exactly what he just did. But... But again, for you, for for him to re- reach that position, you'd think, for God's sakes, that he he would have some sort of a brain in his head. But he, I mean, but he's he's like a high school journalist. I mean, this is this is ridiculous. Uh, the characterization for him was based on what they needed for a particular scene, and that's been it. That that's really all they did. You know, one minute he's the respectable, you know, smart, uh, you know. You know, journalist, the the kind and loving boyfriend. Next yeah. minute, he's being a complete scumbag by reading the paper. Next minute, he's like, oh, or he's giving, you know, I'm so broke, I don't have any money. Here, I'll give you twenty dollars, Miss Homeless Lady. It's like, wow, that's just, you know, that's just th- th- that's the weirdest yeah. type of characterization on the planet. Speaking yeah, totally. Of, speaking of weird characterizations, uh, let's talk about the bad guy whose name I can't even remember. <laughs> yeah. I know the actor's name because actually, here here's the thing. The actor who plays him, his name is Diz Ahmed, or it could be Ahmed. I'm not 100 percent sure how you would pronounce it. You know, people will say it different ways, but whatever. Um, when he was playing the part as a kind of Elon Musk meets Steve Jobs, I actually was enjoying his performance. Yeah. But the, but the minute he got to mustache twirling, yeah, 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 I was like, right. oh come on. Yeah. That yeah, I completely agree with you. Again, again, this was not. This was hardly a thinking man's screenplay this was this was like you said it was mustache twirling i mean seriously we we found we find these random again they don't even explain anything how how do you get into deep space to find symbiotes and first of all how do you even know it's a symbiote a symbiote by definition would be something that latches on to something else to survive Mm. well but you brought these things back with with them attached to nothing Unless there are aliens in space that they pulled these things off of, well, then how do you know they're symbiotes? How do, how do you know how they're supposed to? Again, there's there's no explanation for any of that. They just show up with this 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 muck, and and supposedly they know all these things. Okay, fine, whatever. And they they test it with animals as soon as it really he's really gonna go out and and snatch up homeless people to 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 just sort of try these things out on without any concept of what they actually would do what i mean even if you were just evil to the core and you don't care about people why again there're just so many assumptions why would you assume that this would do anything attached to a person yeah and, I, why, I just, and why the speed why why was he so desperate to get it done like you know 5 5 years ago when they right. just basically I mean, they had them really, for like some months th- right they don't say like they kind of they they alluded to something like oh we're gonna do this and it, and it's gonna it's gonna fix everybody and everything or no we're we're gonna live in space what it, what what so, yeah it was like we're gonna we're gonna live in space because we're gonna bond with the aliens says who what what what, what do you <laughs> why would you assume that that's the case why would you assume for any reason at all that these alien symbiotes first of all how do you even know they're symbiotes but how do you know that it would let us live in space i i don't it's whatever i mean again just you really had to just sort of take everything as it, it, it was just nonsense fluff and you're supposed to just sort of get on board with it yeah and that's the problem you're you're trying to you're trying to build something with this character but you build nothing with the character it's almost like you're just telling the audience oh the, you know venom you don't need us to tell you the story of venom it's it's like that conceit the conceit yeah. uh that uh Zack snyder had about oh these are world-class characters you don't need to know their stories everybody knows these characters it's like and he's he's not wrong you know when we're talking about flash wonder woman you know batman etc yeah those mm-hmm. are characters that are known the world over but guess what that still blew up in your damn face and yeah. now here comes sony with venom they trying to do something similar and honestly if liam hadn't filled me in with some of the stuff i wouldn't have even understood half the stuff that was going on so yeah. it was almost like they were too referential and didn't get enough time to actually build the character in a better way. They didn't give them characters any remorse. The 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 geekiest part for me throughout the entire flick was at the beginning 
the 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 ship crash lands, and the first person infected with the symbiote was named Jameson. Like yeah. out of the Ultimate comics, when it was John Jameson who brought the symbiote to Earth. Oh, see now, now I didn't even know that either. I I did know, I I did make the reference that John Jameson was the astronaut, was an astronaut. Right. So that I got, but I, I did not know that he was one of the ones that brought the symbiote to Earth in, in the new versions. Yeah, he definitely was. And now is he dead? Did, did they just kill the Jameson, Jan Jameson before they yeah. even introduced yeah. J. Jonah Jameson in the new Spider-Man movie? Come on! Yeah. Well, they you can't yeah. do that. <laughs> they they pulled a uh, they pulled the Jimmy Olsen they did from uh, Superman Batman v Superman. Oh, you see, that's there's your first mistake right there. You don't pull your <laughs> influence from a movie as divisive as the Batman v Superman movies, Marvel. Come on. Oh, I'm sorry. Did I say Marvel? I that there's no way that Feige had anything to do with this. In fact, I wouldn't doubt if Feige kind of like just wants to just shove this under the carpet like a piece of dog turd or something like that <laughs> in the wind. <laughs> in the wind. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, but you know, you inter- you're actually bringing up another point, which I would actually like to kind of talk about for a second. Go for it. Because here's what's making here's what I'm nervous about at this point. By the way, uh, Sony and Marvel have an agreement. Um, you know that, that that Sony has essentially just sort of lent Marvel Spider-Man back. Mm-hmm. Uh, so Marvel's going to make the Spider-Man movies, and Sony will will just sort of reap the rewards of that. Um, but here's a problem. Venom did not sink like a stone at the box office. It, it actually got some pretty respectable numbers. Uh, and, and honestly, the people who I was sitting in the theater with, a lot of them were laughing pretty hard. Uh, I mean, uh, so now what if... Sony starts getting a little too big for their britches and says, hey, we can make movies. We know how to make movies after all. And they bring back Spider-Man. Are you going to have Tom Holland up against this incarnation of Venom? And 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 having done this Venom, like, again, we're talking, you mentioned that they're paying respects to the things that happened in the comics with regard to Venom, except the the basic origin of this of the character, which is totally in line with Spider-Man. Uh, and again, I'm 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 kind of going back to the Secret Wars day, so I'm kind of thinking old <laughs> old school. Um, so how do you how do you now have a Venom with Spider-Man when Venom's origin now has nothing to do with Spider-Man? Um, I guess it depends upon the second weekend. Initial mm. op- and opening weekends are good. It's if it has legs. Yeah, it made eighty million at the box office this weekend. It is the highest um, opening for a movie in October uh, ever, uh, according to records. And I'm sure that you know there's lots of people patting themselves on the back and everything like that. Yeah. But but you know what? Um, Justice League opened pretty high too, and then dropped off dismally the the week after, and wound up doing nowhere near the box office that they yeah. predicted. So. We don't know exactly just yet. The way that the deal is with Marvel right now, uh, I've, I've actually, it's funny you should say that. I actually went on a uh, research over the weekend trying to figure out what is the deal with Marvel and Spider Man. Mm. It seems that the, there, is, it, it, there is one more movie and the second Avengers movie, and that is the end of Marvel's involvement with Spider Man and with Tom Holland's uh, contractual obligation as Spider-Man. Mm. So what happens after that? I don't know if they're going to do a renegotiation. I don't know if they're going to walk in like, you know, big big swinging, you know, uh, uh, penises or anything like that. I don't know. I it would depend upon if if the drop off this weekend is let's say 60% loss, then no. They're going to go back to Marvel with hat in hand. But if the drop off is only like 30%, they may get a little cocky. That's my prediction. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and apparently, from what I heard, some somehow or another, after after Spider Man Far From Home and after Avengers Four, Holland still owes a Spider Man movie. Oh, he still owes one more. He I didn't he still that. owes one more. But here's the kicker: Sony can pull him back and say, "We will make the movie. You will come back to Sony, and and you will do this movie for us." Or Sony can say, you can do the, your last movie and you can do it with Marvel. 
That's the problem. So so Holland is still on the hook for another one. So you could very well see him get yanked back by Sony. In fact, depending on how conspiratorial you're feeling, uh, mustache twisting Sony, for all I know, for all we know, maybe that was the plan all along. You go over to Marvel, let them do it right for a couple of movies, get all excited about Tom Holland's Spider-Man, and once you're at peak popularity, we pull you back and you do a movie for us. I'm hoping that's just a wild conspiracy theory that's kind of in my mind right now, Jesus but it's man, not out of the realm of possibility. It's not. That's why you're scaring the hell out of me. Yeah. Oh, it really is October. <laughs> <laughs> Stop with the scary stories, Daddy. Oh my God. I, I I don't know. I'm I I am praying for box office uh, drop off this weekend. I'm really praying for it. I, the, I would the, be the, surprised if it doesn't. Yeah. Yeah. The movie. In, in case we haven't made it clear, ladies and gentlemen, we feel or at least I feel I feel like the movie actually might have had some potential, but they decided to make a bunch of weird characterization ideas when it came to the part of Eddie. Uh, they did not explain things to the audience. They, you know, there's one thing when you say we're going to trust that the audience is smart, and there's another thing where you just kind of gloss it over with techno babble, techno babble, techno babble. You know, it's a symbiote. That's all you need to know. Boom. Next yeah. question. Yeah. You know, that's that's kind of that's di- that's that's a different level of not trusting the audience, as far as I'm concerned. Yeah. Um, it's not it's not an appealing movie. Let's just let's just leave it at that. Agree. Thank you for bringing us collectively to this moment. It is a moment that so many have dreamed of claiming. History starts today. But what we have to do, because the time has come, we have to give this sucker a score. <laughs> uh, should I go first? I'm going to let you go first. All right. I. I will say this. Well, I, it's funny because I did catch a couple reviews before I saw the film. And there were a couple of the more popular reviewers who said, uh, who basically said that as flawed as the film is, as imperfect as it is, that they had a lot of fun watching this film. Now, I just sat there and I went, shills, shills for Sony, whatever. You know, so I, I did not give it any credence whatsoever. I will say that once I saw it, I could kind of see where they were coming from. There were there were fun moments. There was a lot of over the top silliness. Uh, there were some chuckles. Some chuckles that again, I genuinely don't know if they were, if I was laughing for the reasons they wanted me to laugh, or or I was just laughing at it. Uh, but I did understand what they were saying that there was a level of fun the people i was watching it with the people the other people in the theater the theater was surprisingly more crowded than i thought it would be uh and a lot of people were laughing so again i i can kind of see why people would enjoy it me personally i thought this thing was hot garbage i thought it was a complete dumpster fire i thought the script was absolutely positively ridiculous the tone was all over the place. I did not understand why Hardy played this character this way, why he seemed like such a, 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 a guy who, he, he seemed like a guy who, who sh- like I, I can't even imagine him working a regular nine to five job, much less being a journalist. Uh, so again, everything about this movie was all over the place and not to mention the, the CGI it was basically a mess all over the place and I just found the whole thing to be bizarre and the kicker I think is that again you've removed Spider-Man out of the whole equation so I, I don't really it, none of it really makes any sense it, it, as, as a standalone it doesn't make sense and as a comic book movie it does not make any sense so other people might have had fun with it uh, I had a couple chuckles, but that is not going to get this movie above a two as far as I'm concerned. All right. That is actually a really good score. So before the X-Men, before the Spider-Man movies, comic book movies of the 90s were, well, let's just say crap. This movie felt like a 90s movie, down to some of the special effects that occur in this movie. 
Agreed. It was trope after trope after trope of the normal things that they think that audiences will like. It tries to appeal one minute, then takes away that appeal by having characters do odd things just for the sake of a plot. It did not have a single redeeming character, with the exception of when the bad guy was doing his best Elon Musk uh, meets Steve Jobs impression. None of the characters were appealing to me at all. Not one. Mm. The surprise at the end, if you can call it a surprise, during the mid credit sequence, where there is good old <laughs> Woody Harrelson yeah. as Cletus Cassidy, and I'm like, really? You're already going to Carnage. You're already <laughs> going to try to go to Carnage. I I, I was like, Ugh, give me a break. Yeah. I mean, granted, if anybody could play Cletus Cassidy, it's freaking Woody Harrelson, but that aside... There wasn't a lot of joy in this movie. I My heart didn't race once. Like, during the big motorcycle chase, the motorcycle chase where the trucks were following them, I, part of me was like, oh, okay, this is pretty decent. And then it would get, then it would immediately undercut. This was the basic theme of the entire movie. They would start something decent and then completely undercut it. Then they would start something else that has that seems decent and completely undercut it. Over and over and over again, I was exhausted by the end of the movie. And when it finally came to the end of the movie, I really didn't want to stay through the credits. But there was no way I couldn't not stay through the credits with my son there. And I'm glad he did, which we're going to get to in a minute. I gave this movie a three. I only gave it the extra point above yours, Joe, because I feel like that some of the writers and perhaps even the director actually was trying to be relatively respectful of the character of Venom but couldn't make it happen for whatever reason. So I'm going to give him a little bit of extra credit for that one. Mm. But other than that, no, this movie is dreadful. I, 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 Anybody that's saying they like this movie, I'm like, what movie did you see? <laughs> you, you know, ironically, is I heard a lot of people raving, <laughs> raving about the mid credit scene. And I remember when I was watching the film saying, you know, okay, well, I got to watch the mid credits because apparently that's the best part of the whole movie. And they do this, stupid, boring, lackluster scene where he just walks in and there's there's good old Woody with the big weird sideshow Bob wig and he <laughs> and he got all I can think of was sideshow Bob when I'm looking at him. And he got I, and I'm, I'm and, definitely and, inserting some sideshow Bob sounds for that. <laughs> <laughs> and then all he says at the end is like when I get out of here, it's gonna be carnage. Get it? I'm like, that was the big thing. That was it. I get it that Carnage is a character, but like that, I mean, seriously, they were people raved about it like it was the best part of the movie. I'm like, that was ridiculous. A part of me is sad that we're not actually going to see Woody Harrell. Well, maybe we might still see that. Holy shit. Uh, that's scary. It's, hey, this is Sony. This is Sony. They, they think their, their crap doesn't stink. So you never know. Uh, I, you know, there is a if, part if of this me that film would does like middling Woody... numbers. Again, you're you're talking about a, a a movie that Avi Arad could not wait to do for some reason, and and thirty years too late, almost to to put this character to film. Again, like this company makes the weirdest decisions. I don't know why they push this forward without Spider Man. I I find the whole thing, and it was never even a reference, by the way, to anything. I mean, I guess they can't. I'm not sure. But you'd think there'd be like a subtle reference to a bigger universe out there if that's their hope at some point. But again, so I, I found the whole thing just to be weird. So listen, I would not doubt for one minute that they'll do a second one as long as the numbers for this one are not terrible. Let us all pray for a bad second weekend, ladies and gentlemen. Amen. <laughs> Speaking of, what else shall we pray for? Hey, Joe, who asked you? Yeah, who asked me? Uh, the, <laughs> I, th there's a part of me that th when this part came up, I literally said to myself, "This could this could be the my who asked you, or it could be my fear consideration. I don't know." But the part when he's in the car and and she's driving, and Venom starts saying. Eddie, you know, you really should apologize. You you haven't said said I'm sorry yet for for what you did. <laughs> I'm like I'm like like now suddenly now suddenly I'm watching a rom com. 
I, I, I like literally like I'm like this. I uh, like I'm watching like I'm. Uh, Oh my god! Like, are you kidding? I'm like, is this four weddings and a funeral? Am, am I watching? <laughs> oh my god! I mean, this is crazy. I'm thinking like Julia Roberts is in the front seat, and you got you know the the, rom- the romantic guy in the back seat. Honey, I got to apologize for you know. I mean, it was just it was just so stupid. Um, and that was the moment where I, I just I said that that's it. This movie doesn't even care what it is anymore. This movie just will be anything at any moment. And they don't even care anymore. So that is my who asked you. That was, that was the stupid. And again, I laughed at it. I feel like I should give it points for laughing at it. It was probably the only positive reaction I had. But I'm laughing at it because it was just so stupid. It was terrible. It was not. It didn't work for me as far as I'm concerned. Yeah. It wasn't my who asked you. My who asked you was much, much simpler. It was the trope. You know the trope. The age old trope. The hey. Who's the bad guy going to be against this uh, this good guy? Ah, of course, the evil opposite. The evil <laughs> yeah. exact opposite. But he's yeah. bigger and stronger. I can throw knives out of his system. Ex- uh-huh. Right, exactly. Just just a bigger, yeah. And that, you know, seriously, what was, the, you know, that whole side story, by the way, the ships land in, in Asia and they take all but one, right? Mm-hmm. And the one apparently wants to f- catch up with the other ones anyway. So apparently it sends it spends 6 months in various people's bodies before it finally gets onto a plane to go to America, to go to San Francisco to to catch up with its brothers. Well, you could have just stayed put in the first place. <laughs> like whoa. like so that whole side bit was bizarre. This is the advanced species, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's coming to take over our world. <laughs> yeah. I'm waiting. I'm waiting for. I'm waiting for uh, the other Venom to say, uh, "Can you move me up to first class, please?" <laughs> uh, all right. Um, for your consideration, I'm pretty sure you and I are on the same page on this one. I think so uh, too. So yes, yeah, so let me let me give you my runner up before we before we go there. In, I also have a runner up. So you, so you go ahead with your runner up first, and then I'll do my runner up. Go ahead. Uh, all right. Perfect. Uh, it, it has to be the other just most bizarre line in the film, which actually just just marginally beat out the other one. And I said to myself, like, I, I the movie has to be self-aware at this point. Like, it has to, by the time Venom says to Eddie, and Eddie's saying, why are you being nice? How come you're helping everybody now? And he goes, well, uh, you see, on my home planet, I'm I'm kind of a loser. I'm saying to myself, this this is what I would be saying if I was doing like a, a mystery science theater and I was just sort of heckling the movie. Like <laughs> that's what I would be doing. I'd be that's probably what I'd be saying at this point. So I was I literally that was the only time in this movie I literally laughed out loud. Like you, a, an audible laugh came out of my mouth when that happened. So I, again, I don't know if it's the worst moment of the movie or the best or what it is. But that was that was like the only moment where I actually chuckled out loud. All right, I'll get you that one. That's my runner up. My runner up um, is actually Diz Ahmed. I thought that this I think this guy's got a career ahead of him. I think he's a good actor. I think he just it was in a crap part. I really enjoyed when he was playing like the oh Mr. Nice Guy businessman and so on and so forth. And you know. When he turned like mustache twirly, I you know as as cliche as it was, I don't think he did such a bad job. I think out of all the actors in this movie, he was the only one that maybe you know was actually trying. I think everybody else just kind of phoned it in. So I'm giving him credit. I, I, yeah, I'll agree with that, and not for nothing. But I mean, I I kind of felt that the whole cast did a respectable job, and I as much as I'm sort of baffled about Tom Hardy and how he played this, I. I, it's almost like I, I'm almost willing to give him the benefit of the doubt that he knows something I don't, or because I just I just felt that whole I, the whole performance was bizarre, but yeah. he seemed to be giving it a hundred percent. I guess I, I don't know. He he seemed like he was there to work, but I just I just didn't get the decision to to play the character that way. Did you hear about his interview where he said that his favorite part of the movie is forty minutes that didn't make it into the final movie? 
I heard something about that. Yeah. So I'm, yeah, you're, you're right. Maybe, maybe he was kind of feeling a little bamboozled into doing this. Cause I, from the time they announced he was doing this film, I could not figure out why. No, you know, I what? Mean, he's a guy who's, who, who's, you, you could reasonably be sure that he takes on good parts. Mm-hmm. What he was thinking here. I don't know. This might've been just one of those paycheck movies. It, it might've sold him up. You know, Michelle Williams isn't exactly a slouch when it comes to acting either. So, it, maybe this was a case, this was a bamboozle. Maybe you're right. Maybe they just they they sold them one thing and edited what they wanted. Uh, it could very well be. It could very well be the movie they thought they were making could be sitting on the cutting room floor. Which brings us to our actual four year consideration. <laughs> Speaking of, yeah, the after credit sequence. The after credit sequence. <laughs> the the trailer or the or the. The, the the scene from Spider Man uh, Multiverse into the, into, the, into the Spider-Verse, thank you. Yep. That was the best I when that came on and I'm sitting there watching that, I said to myself, Why can't I be watching this movie instead? We we could add it to the calendar, dude. It's coming this Christmas. I'm definitely seeing it. My kid's excited about it, and so am I, frankly. It looks so much fun. So good. It really does. That that five minute thing that they put at the end was it, it really did. I mean, I've been kind of excited about this movie anyway. Mm-hmm. Uh, but that kind of even, I thought it drove it home even more. Did you hear I, the that whole they got concept li- is pretty pretty cool? I agree. Did you hear that they got Liv Schreiber to play the part of Kingpin? No, I didn't. Yep. I like that. That's that, that's pretty cool. Yeah, I'm I'm liking a lot of things about this movie. I I I really. I wish I it that is definitely the best part of that entire movie. In the Predator, it was the trailer for the Halloween movie that was my favorite part of that movie. <laughs> Here yeah. is another trailer. So so basically we close out the whole Predator Venom, you know, parallel like a perfectly good book with the <laughs> fact that we both enjoyed a trailer for a completely different movie than anything yeah. in the movie we saw. Totally agree. I you know, and honestly, I I thought that looked pretty cool just because of the animation. I thought the animation style was really kind of cool looking. In fact, I love I, mean, I I I first of all, I was shocked enough when I saw Howard the Duck show up in Guardians of the Galaxy. Mm-hmm. The fact that I I've now actually seen Spider Ham on the big <laughs> screen kind of blows my mind. Like that was something like I used to see that pop up in different comics. I don't know if I've ever actually sat and read anything that had to do with Spider, but I used to see him all the time. And I remember thinking like, is that supposed to be like a real thing? Are they, like, is that supposed to be like, like the fact that he's actually in this movie for real. And, and what I love too, is that his animation style is different than the others. Like yes. he moves around like a Looney Tunes com- cartoon. Yep, and I, like thought, I thought, yeah, I mean, and how great is that? Like, I mean, th- I I have a feeling this is going to be a real. I I kind of feel like we're going to really enjoy this. It looks really, really creative. I agree, I agree. See, we see how related we are over this over <laughs> anything else with Venom, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, but you know what? You know what? You want to hear real elation? Come back next week. Come back next week. Ah, yes. Because next week, we're starting a whole new film series, ladies and gentlemen, but we're going back a little ways. Back to 1978. For the Mario Puzo written, Richard Donner directed, Gene Hackman, Marlon Brando, and the late, great Christopher Reeve, Superman the Movie. Love it. Can't wait. I, that's going to be another gush What a palate fest. cleanser. What a palate cleanser. Absolutely, absolutely. After Predator and Venom and Crystal Skull, yeah, we needed it. We absolutely, you, I mean, I don't know if you planned it that way. If you did, I love you. I want to kiss you. I'm, it totally <laughs> makes up for making me go to see, you know, Predator and, and this. But yes, yeah. this that and this absolutely makes sense. It, it is, well, before, it, you get, before you get too excited, let's also keep in mind that we're also going to kind of go down the slippery slope like we did with Raiders, by the way. We, we start off at a... At a Mega high and and it goes down. I know, I know, I know. Well, let's not think about that right now. Let's not think about that. Let's think about the beauty of next week, please. Mm. So until then, ladies and gentlemen, have a nice night. See you next week. Thanks for listening to the Reviews Without Remorse podcast with Joe and Dave. Join us here every Thursday for a new episode. 
And be sure to check out the Reviews Without Remorse channel on YouTube and Vidme for spoiler-free reviews of new releases as well as in-depth discussions of current and classic cinema. If you enjoy this podcast, please consider becoming a patron. You can find our page at patreon.com. As little as $1 a month goes a long way. All clips in this podcast are used for commentary and critique and is considered fair use. No copyright infringement is intended. My name is Peter Parker. I'm pretty sure you know the rest. I saved the city, fell in love, then I saved the city again and again and again. Look, I'm a comic book, a serial, I did a Christmas album, and a so-so popsicle. But this isn't about me. Not anymore. Spider-Man swings in once a day, zip zaps up in his little mask and answers to no one. I love you, moms. Yeah, I know, Dad. You gotta, you gotta say I love you back. Dad, are you serious? I, I want to hear it. it. Look at this place. Dad, I love you. Dad, I love you. That's, That's a copy. copy. My name is Miles Morales. I'm the one and only Spider-Man. At least that's what I thought. You ever hear of the Super Collider? You're gonna love this. Dimension opening now. You're like me. That's impossible. All right, kid, listen up. This fry is your universe. It's soggy, it's weird, it's gross. And this delicious normal fry is my universe. So you want to learn to be Spider-Man. Can you teach me? Yes, I can. Time to swing. Ah, Good, doing you're doing it. it. Double tap to release and whip it out again. Okay. Whip and release. You're a natural. Whip. 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 Hey, guys. Who are you? I'm Gwen Stacy. I'm from another, another dimension. How many more spider people are there? Hey, fellas. Hello. This could literally not get any weirder. It can get weirder. Okay. We need to get back to our universes soon. Brooklyn is gonna collapse. My family lives in Brooklyn. Whoa, 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 whoa. Miles, what's wrong? This was never your city. It's mine. If I don't destroy the collider, none of us will have a home to go home to. Remember, what makes you different? Let's go! Is what makes you Spider-Man. Officer, I love you. <laughs> Wait, what? That way, that way. Ooh. Other way, other way, other way, other way. Do animals talk in this dimension? Because I don't want to freak them out.